Welcome back this evening, everybody. I think tonight we're going to pull this 5-bolt cover off. According to the manual, they specify a cat tool to take that nut off behind that cover. And I just want to see if it's something I'm going to be able to get off or if I'm going to have to make a tool for that. Because we're going to have to pull that lower shaft out of there. And then, once we get that off, I think we're going to migrate to the back. And we'll get them fold over locks and bolts pulled on these caps. We'll have to mark them so we know what side is what. And we'll get it ready to pull this rear shaft out. All right, same procedure as always. Break them loose by hand. Just make sure we don't have anything that's excessively tight. Helps if you have it going the right way. Grab one of my tin bolt containers or part containers here. Get those in there. Set that off to the side. Now we'll have to try and get this cover off here. Same thing as the upper one. I think if I just catch a lip here, we should be able to get it just popped off of there. Well, I'm not sure if you guys can quite make it out in the lighting here, but it's just a spanner nut. And luckily, I ordered a bunch of spanner wrenches and they came in today. So, let's go ahead and there's a locking tab in there. We'll get that pushed back or flattened out. And we'll come in here with a spanner wrench, see if we can get those to move. Actually, I was wrong here, and I should have known this because I just looked at the book. There is a snap ring in here, or they just call it a ring in the book. They don't say a snap ring. We'll get that walked off of here. Tell you what, ever since we drained that transmission, everything sure seems to turn a lot nicer. There is, if you look, it's got a long leg on it. That actually sticks down in to the nut. Or possibly even the shaft. Well guys, I know why Caterpillar spec'd a uh, special socket for these. They're not quite really that much fun to get to with a wrench, right up next to this casting. The socket sure would be a lot nicer. So to give you guys an idea on how that snap ring works, right there in the threads is just a small dimple that the hook part of this would actually sit into.
and then on the nut here, that's a spring that goes around there, but there's also a hole through the nut so it can't move off from that dimple. And the spring in this keeps it tight around the spanner nut. So with that nut and that out of the way, the book then calls for using the two threaded holes to then back this plate off, just like we did on the top. Except we didn't do that on the top because the top one didn't have the threaded holes and either does this one. So, basically it's gonna be the same method as last time. See if we can kinda of catch one of these lips in here. Try to get it started moving. That we can possibly see about either using a slide hammer or maybe get a pry bar behind it, just something to keep working it out towards us here. All right, guys, according to the book procedure, they want you to remove this retainer first, this bearing retainer, and that's supposed to slide off the end of the shaft here. After that, they want you to drive this shaft towards the back of the tractor far enough to get your gear assemblies off it. Well, I'm having a hard time actually getting anything behind this one. The profile of the casting is a little different, and I can't get anything to hook on there. But I got to thinking, why can't I just drive this shaft back now far enough to maybe get something on the back side of this to drive it forward? So, not 100% sure it's going to work, but we're going to try, and it is moving in the back. I'll show you here in a second. At the back of the tractor here, you can see how far that bearing has actually moved out. And we should have ample clearance between that and the ring gear to go quite a ways. So I'm going to keep using a brass punch on the front of that shaft and just see how much it wants to keep moving here. Okay guys, so by driving that shaft back, I was able to create just enough room in there to get my slide hammer on the back of that lip with an extended finger and just get it started here. I got my pry bar in there just holding it. Let's kind of work that pry bar to get that out of there, just like we did on the top. In one of the last videos, I had someone ask what this was for a finger. It's a CJ66-19. It's just a snap-on. It's made for pulling axle bearings out of, you know, light-duty pickups, cars, rear-wheel rear -wheel drive stuff. It's what they're designed for. But, I mean, they have tons and tons of uses for these. I find this one to be very handy. Broken it several times, they warranty it. Works out great. Well guys, not to dip out on the transmission here, but if you actually look where that counter shaft goes all the way through the back there, we end up below the ring gear for the ring and pinion. Pinion's gone, obviously, that was on the upper shaft. I do think it would be a lot easier to bring that shaft back because we have to pull all of these gears off in order to get them out so i think the next step is pulling that whole shaft out of there
Okay guys, very quickly I'm going to explain my plan for getting this out. It was brought to my attention that you can unbolt these. I've never really dealt with, you know, much for brake bands. Most of the time when I redo these machines it's just a, you throw out the old and you get new. So I've never really messed around with taking them apart. But these four bolts here are supposed to separate this top part. Same with on the other side. So I made sure I could get all four of these loose before I went forward with this plan. And they all did come loose. But that'll take this top part of this band off because they will not flex about beyond there. So that will not let that shaft come out. But if I could take this top part off, this piece should flex back far enough. And I know that this rod up here will flex forward. That should leave enough room to bring the drum by. We need to get the fold over locks folded down and then pull these four bolts. I already marked these. The way I do this is I just mark one dot in the corner and then one dot out here. Same on the other side, one dot out here, one dot in the corner. You can't get these mixed up. If you try to put this one on this side, that dot will be up front. So they, they, you can't mix them left to right. Those four undone. Let's see if we can separate this out here. Just like that, we pulled the top of the shoe. That actually worked out very well. Uh, let's move to the other side. We'll do the same thing.
with both the bearing caps removed on both sides, I wanted to see if we were going to have enough room with the steering clutch here because there is a stepped lip in there. And on this side, that one does not move at all. But fortunately, this one moves quite a ways and it moves rather easily, considering. So I'm hoping that's enough space that once we kind of pick this up, we'll be able to move over and get that step out of that side there. I think we can do that. It doesn't look like there's any obstructions that are going to limit that. I may have to possibly back that off to get it to go. We'll see if I end up doing that. I will mark it just to have a reference for when we go back together. But guys, we're out of time tonight. We'll pick this up again tomorrow.